he good. said. That's improv. That was good improv. You know, that's the improv. Henry's big, good. Henry that has wasn't a Henry, good. that was Big Dutch. That was Big Dutch. That's the <laughs> alter, that's the alter <laughs> ego. Big Dutch. All right, hey. So today we're going through a multi-directional session, also a little bit of agility. There is a difference between the two. We'll explain that later. We're here with Henry Anderson of the New York Jets, Jack Crawford of the Atlanta Falcons. So today is all about making sure these guys understand principles of change of direction, low center of gravity, making sure they keep uh, a base that's appropriate, whether they're gonna cross over, whether they're gonna shuffle, whether they're gonna cut. It's a lot about decision making, finding the right angle, and making sure that we manage their ability to move under various constraints. Now a lot of people think that agility and change of direction is just about random cone drills. It's not. Everything you do has to have a purpose. So that's fine if you're using cones, that's fine if you're using a variety of other implements, but you've got to have some element of decision making there if you want it to be true agility. Are they reacting to a color you uh, shouted out? Are they reacting to an opponent? Are they reacting to something else in the environment that gives them this affordance of they have to make a decision under uncertainty? So you're gonna see these guys go through a lot of different things. Sometimes we're gonna give them a lot of technical cues. Other times as a coach, you just gotta step back and you've gotta give them a chance to learn it. The most dangerous virus as a coach is over coaching, giving them too much feedback or too frequent feedback. So we're gonna have some fun today. You're probably gonna hear some bad jokes in between or you're gonna get rocking. All right, let's go. All right, body weight squats once you're done. Hopefully the film, the camera gets nice and tight on Jack, taking 18 hours to squat. Good 10 reps, back nice and flat. I am just impressed every day that you have the same cutoff hoodie. Like your laundry, I remember you telling me you wouldn't go to this Airbnb one time because it didn't have a laundry <laughs> machine, and now yeah. I get it. Because it's the same one every time. By the way, squat, Henry, you're gonna go in and out, in and out, external rotation, 10. Just fire it up, fire it up. You remember, hips are everything, especially when it comes to change in direction. Back's nice and flat, you shouldn't feel any tension in the low back. Make sure that comes all through the glute. <laughs> it's a small thing tonight. Do you think, uh, since you play for the Jets, that Gary would ever like, accept an invite, Gary Vaynerchuk, to come like suit up, get on the field, maybe act as quarterback? I think he wants so. Gary Vaynerchuk? If you had a message to him right now, you know, what, like, what would that be? I think he needs to suit up. I think he suits up and comes to training camp for a day or two. And I think Gary V really needs to know what it's like being on the field if you're one of the Jets elite. I think that that would just be, I think that he's all about content, right? So yeah. Gary's listening. Mr. Vaynerchuk, Henry Anderson right now is inviting you to come down to Jets training camp, suit up, go through a number of drills. We think it'd be great, not only for New York, but everybody at Banner Media. Henry, say he's good to go. He said it better than I could. There you go. All right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. hey, version one, okay, inside leg. So in this case, that's the right leg. All I want you guys to do is over, back, stick, and reset. You're gonna do that three times on your own. Where this is gonna go, and a lot of this has to do with all the forces that you guys are gonna incur when you're cutting, changing direction, fighting somebody off, is you'll then eventually go over, back, so you can see the hip and knee are gonna be subjected to a lot of different lateral forces. You wanna make sure that nothing dives in and everything stays in line. So first things first, we'll go on my command, get on your right leg. Yep, we're just gonna, I'll say go, you'll just go over and back. So you'll give me some height now. Ready, hands up, and go. Over, back, good, reset, hands up. Go, over, back. If I can push you, you're not stable. Tap the ground, I'd rather, so I'd rather have you, instead of you doing this, if you come back and you're a little unstable, just touch. Right, regain that balance, that's okay. Ready, hands up, go. Over, back, good, relax. Phase one, switch it around. We're gonna do the same thing with the left leg now. Go, over, back, woo! Jack, Gary Vanderchuk's definitely not coming to Atlanta. Damn, can't even get that piece right. Here we go, ready, tall. Go, over, back, 
Six. Two, one more. Go. Go. Over. Back. Good. And relax. Now remember, even though this hurdle is not even really close to six inches, maybe at most, you still want to think about getting height. The last thing you want to do, and I tell people, don't think about jumping over the hurdle. You want to jump nearly as high as you can, and that will just naturally clear it. So I just jump over the hurdle. I'm going to do the bare amount necessary. I'm not going to get any hip into it. So make sure you're coming up. Now, on you, meaning on your own pace here, now you're going to go over, back, hop, hop, stick. Okay, I'll demonstrate one more time. Inside leg. So I'm up, up, stick, stick, boom. Ooh. Driving that through. On you, three reps. Hold, relax, good. Come on back, same thing. Hands up, always start tall. Go, push, push. There, now when you land, the landing you have to think, when I'm landing, it's gotta be boom, aggressive. Hips and hands go together all the time. Son, that's a gift. When you do the reps right, you're gonna throw in a gift, huh? Yeah, last one on the right. We go, stick, arms back more aggressively there. There you go, Jack. Quicker off the ground, Jack. Try to be a little quicker off the ground. Nice center of gravity there, Henry. Arms up, hop, hop. There we go. Much better, hips. Sink down. Act like the ground's unstable. If you imagine the ground is being unstable, you're gonna land with a little bit more force, a little bit more control. Grab a drink once you're done, nicely done. All right, right here we have what's called a reactive Y drill. So this is a really good one if you wanna focus on some elements of change of direction and reactivity. There's a lot of ways you can mix this up. What we're gonna have them do today is mix up a lateral half kneeling start, even a full kneel. You can go lateral push up. Creativity is the limit. You can even go two knee, have them split up and go. The point is, they're gonna run to towards these cones. I'll be at the top, and I'm either gonna tell them orange, green, or yellow. If it's orange, they'll continue to sprint straight through. If it's either yellow or green, what I'm wanting them to do is take a cut and a directional step to the outside at about a 45. That's why we call it the reactive Y. So they'll go on a command, we'll mix up these commands. Again, they'll run. If I say green, boom, we wanna see a nice directional step driving through. Okay, biggest thing, if you're trying this at home or no matter what, you wanna use cleats. As a coach, wearing shoes because I'm implementing the drill, but we see a lot of people try to do these drills without proper footwear that's a lot more important than how fancy your clothes or your tights or all this other crap is. Proper footwear, don't roll your ankle. Now you're gonna see them do it live. All right, only on the foot movement. Down, set, hit, hit, hit. Yo, there we go now. Take a little bit of a harder cut. We're gonna see that sometimes where you're gonna start anticipating. Just make sure that you always drop the center of gravity. Make sure you lock that in. Same thing, foot movement, foot movement. Ready, set, hit, orange. Oh, that's another thing, that's why we do it. There's gonna be some level of anticipation every time. It's more like the game. That's agility. If I tell you, hey Henry, right now, before you even start, you're sprinting through the uh, orange, that's change of direction, right? Or actually, that's just even a linear sprint. If I tell you you're going to a different color of a certain amount of weight and you, it's predetermined, that's change of direction. Agility is I've got to react and make a decision. Now we're going to go lateral push-up start. We're going to change this a little bit. So now you're going to have to get into this push-up. You want to find your own solution. Guys will ask what's the best way. If I pop up, I tend to go here. I'll transition and do a crossover and then sprint. Some guys choose to push off that outside leg instead. This is why it's an assessment. Let's see what you tend to do and how we can correct it. When you hear the clap, only when you hear it clap, down, set, hit, 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 green. There we go, stay to the outside, nicely done. Much better job when the answer is an odd number. Set, hit, hit, four, hit, two, nine, yellow. There we go. Last variation, 
Then we're gonna face the other way. You're gonna go to a lateral start. So our outside leg shifted at a positive shin angle. My right's my outside leg here. My right arm is back. I'm loaded, ready to go, okay? The second clap you hear. Second clap. Left up, right arm back. Good, loaded. Down, set, hit! What did we notice there? Went off the first clap. Second. You clapped four weeks. There was, there was, it was, it was uh, no right. chance. He got, he got you going. Say, yeah. got you no, you got me on. You said after the second yeah. clap. No, and you're no, like, no, 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 no. You're like, after the second clap. All right. Uh, no, I'm right on back. No. Yeah. You're not wrong. Okay, so don't even try. No, I, no. Did you see what I, I said? I go, this time we're going after the second clap. I was going to ask, did no, you he said, we're going after the second clap. This is a nat, this is typical athlete versus coach BS right here. I was going to ask that. No. Does that count? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clap. Listen, yeah. I'll be the bigger man. I thought he was trying to fuck with you. I'll be the bigger man and I'll say, hey, you want coach's fault. What I do? Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm like, why'd you just run? I said, go. Listen to this, that's, that's always the case. That's that's hey, that's two most powerful words a coach can say what I've learned is I was, well, three words, I was wrong. Okay, I was wrong. Here we go. On the second clap. Set, hit it, hit, hit, go, hit. Ah, uh, three. Ooh, <laughs> off the back flip. When I do a back flip, I'm kidding. All right, here we go. First clap, first clap. Hit, hit, go, hit. Orange, straight through. Nice job, head down, finishing through. Grab a sip, next drill. I'm just thankful you guys, I'm just thankful you guys have a sense of humor. I can't deal, hey, I will take an athlete with a good sense of humor over anything else. Any, Cause if you have a sense of humor, that means, right, like, you get, like you're humble, you can learn, and you gotta have some fun, no matter how talented you are. All right, next drill, next drill. This one's kind of the coup de gras, All right? There's a lot of different elements to it. You see this center cone. And around it, we have a variety of other colors. Okay, now just so we're clear, this is green. We're about as close as green as they make in cone colors. Okay, this is orange, obvious, but I wanna make sure we're pointing it out. What do you think this one is? Yellow. Now, each one is set across from each other for a reason, because what's gonna happen here is, Corey, come on in here. We're gonna give you a variety of different ways you can start just like that last drill. Let's just keep it simple at first. So let's say we're just facing each other, okay? Corey represents you guys in this drill, okay? I'm the coach. Now this is gonna be coach-led. Corey has no idea which cone I'm going to go to, okay? But once he figures it out, say I drop back and go to the yellow, we have to have our foot aligned with the yellow, and then it's a race through the other yellow, okay? We'll show you a couple examples. So another example might be backs turned to one another. Now, I'm gonna flip around, choose a cone to sprint to, and then we race to that opposite cone of the same color. He has no idea where I'm going. So we're gonna flip, here I am, going to the green, we've gotta race through to the other green, okay? The only other variation we're gonna do with this is one that's a little bit more specific, both of you be in D alignment. I'm the quarterback, okay, we're gonna start here, okay, I'll say down, set! Hit, he'll enter the drill. When he gets close, I'm gonna scramble. Same thing. It goes from one color cone to that opposite. You with me? You will be after the first repetition. Now, to give you guys more rest, Corey's gonna serve as the rabbit instead of you guys competing against each other. Big groups, we can compete against each other. This, we wanna make the most of it. So Corey's gonna, he doesn't have cleats, so if he doesn't beat you, that says something about your playing ability. Okay, now, I'm gonna say go. You're gonna come in and then when he chooses, he's gonna choose, he's gonna go to one of those cones. So watch, Corey, let's let's do it. So I'm you. You're the rabbit, big dog. You choose where to go. Okay, I'm pursuing. So I'm here. Now I've got to look at where Corey's gonna go. I've got to match him and sprint through. Here we go. Big Jack, you're pursuing. Okay, so wherever he goes, which you don't know, you've got to get to that cone and back through the opposite cone. Okay? I'm on go. Yeah, on go. Ready? Set. Help. Boom, find him, cone, get through, get through, get through. Good, we're practice reps right now, practice reps. Any option, that's the point. Just like when you're chasing a quarterback, you don't know where he's gonna roll out to, where he's gonna go. All right, next one, go. Good, follow him, good, get through. Other cone, other cone, other cone. Okay, now we've done our walkthrough. Now this one I'm gonna have you do a little different. You're gonna start halfway between you and the rabbit here. 
backs to him, okay? Coach, your back's gonna be to him too. So in this instance, I'll say go, you'll flip, and then you'll have to react as well. This helps you find yourself in space and then adds an another element of reactivity to it. Okay, on the second clap, second clap, down, set, hit, hit, go, hit. Oh, got coach. Here we go. Good move. Follow him. Get through to that other cone. Go, 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 go. Good, Henry, you and me this time. Okay. Turn around. I'm gonna act like the quarterback, so I got the space. Down. When I say, when I say go, okay? Down, set, hit, hit, blue, 40. Go. Good. Here, get through, get through, get through. Nicely done. Good. Take a moment. Take a moment. Now, I want you coming in at a little bit of angle, like you're rushing off the edge. So whether that's you coming around here and entering the drill or any other, okay? All right. Corey, on you. Come on, go. Go. Good. Get around. Hands up. Go follow him. Get there, get there, get there. Go ahead, nicely done. But that's fine, you want hands on them. That's why it's agility instead of just bullshit cone memorization. You want like, that's a nice thing about real agility. It should involve some element of you messing up because that's learning. Is as opposed if I just give you three cones and it's predetermined, you ain't learning, you're just memorizing something. And we know from, yeah, that's fine. We know from school you can memorize something and not really have learned it at all. Henry, you're smoked. You know, I got my red shoes on. You're smoked. Blue 40, set, hot. Where's he at? Set, go. That's why you gotta have cleats. That's why he still didn't get me. Hey, good luck. You all right, catching breath? Dude, I feel like this time I'm gonna get, I got you now. I don't even know my offensive line skills here. Oh, yeah, on my movement. On my movement here. A nightmare. You ain't never dealt with anything like me. Here we go. <laughs> See, I got in his headspace. It's okay to be intimidated. He's dealing with Desha Deshaun Jackson over there. All right, here we go. On me. You ready? You ever seen an old lineman like me before? Fucking in high school. High school, baby. <laughs> you can steal my chocolate milk you're actually going to pay for. Go! <laughs> There we go, there we go. Find him, that's fine. Get your hands on him. Go, 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 go. Good drink. Nicely done. Hey, you gotta have fun with it. You gotta make mistakes or you're not learning. It gives you an idea of that's true agility. It's decision making, moving around obstacles. Two more drills and we're out. You can see there's limitless options with what you do on that one. Color cone, even giving them different numbers, anything like that. All right, we'll explain the next drill. Next drill is one of my favorites. This is called the reactive T. So we already saw the reactive Y. The reactive T, you can see we have four colors of cone. We have white, we have black, we have orange, and we have kind of an off green. Now, there's a lot of possibilities that the athletes can choose in terms of how to navigate this. The coach will be starting at the top of the T, and the athlete will have to run to a certain cone. So if we say green, they're gonna run to green. Now. From here, the coach can call any other no, uh, color. It could be orange, black, or white, and the athlete can choose which movement they want to do to be able to get to their, the other cone most efficiently. So for example, let's say they know ahead of time they're gonna go green, and then they're gonna go back to white. They'll come here, I'll say white. They can either drop, step, open up, and sprint. They could sit here and plant and shuffle or if it's a DB, they could even just backpedal. But the point is, they've got to guess what that next uh, cone is going to be, or they've just got to make sure that they can react in real time fast enough so they can get there. So it could be orange, black, orange, black. Maybe they choose to sprint. Then we say white, maybe they drop step. So this one is incredibly demanding on the lower body because it involves a lot of changes of direction, a lot of movement variability. Here we go. Not realistically, and that's a good question. So saying realistically, wouldn't we sprint to every cone? No, because that's not always gonna be the most efficient angle. If I say black, and then last minute, I say orange, some guys, they may stutter step a lot, and then the time it takes them to turn, they could have just planted, taken a good angle, and shuffled. So that's why so much of this is about finding a good body position 
and what's most efficient to you. A lot of athletes will have tendencies as well. You'll see some guys always choose the same thing. Because if I say orange, or sorry, black, orange, yellow, then yes, drop step, that'd be a little bit better, okay? Here we go. There's no, this first time through, there's no wrong here. It's a coach wanting to see what you do when you react. And then it's an opportunity for us to discuss which movement's more efficient. So I'll give you the first color, this first round right out the gate. The first one you're gonna go to is black. Okay. Everything off that, you're gonna react and you don't know, okay? okay. You're gonna pull them out. Yep, ready. Black, white, orange, black, white. Good, finish through, relax. Nicely done. So that's all, that's great. Now why'd you choose the shuffle there? Why'd you choose the shuffle between those other cones? What's the most efficient? Switch it up, right? But that, so that's, that's a big point is, what seems most efficient in the moment? If you're here, you have a split second to decide. And when you were asking, well, couldn't you sprint to each one? Sometimes that's the hardest thing to do because that requires, now you're in a narrow base, you're trying to turn, so it's not always most efficient, okay? You'll see an example with how I'm gonna screw Henry up here. I kind of like, like, I kind of think about it in like terms of like a game. Like, I feel like we would always sprint as D linemen to every time we get like whatever angle we go into. Yep. We switch up the angle, we would sprint. Unless it was like fucking, you really trying to contain like a fucking back. Sure. You're trying to get out on the edge or something. Right. Key on some weird though, fucking like reverse. But key word, in the game. Not every yeah. agility yeah. drill yeah. wants it to be sprint. Yeah. Like the, because you do position specific work almost all year round. Yeah. Remember athleticism is the foundation of you being a football player. Okay. All right, here we go. First one's orange. Orange, white, orange, green, orange, white. Plant, good, not bad. Now, again, another element of agility. He opens up because it's not pre-programmed. He makes a mistake, but now he's got to plant and redirect and get back. That's just like a game. Do you always choose the best way to come at a game? You think you do, but you end up on your ass sometimes too. And this is what this helps with now. Nothing scripted and I'm throwing a wrinkle at you. This is important to hear this, please. All you're going off of is what I call. All, only what goes out of my mouth is what you're going out of, okay? Ready, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Black, white, orange, white. There you go, relax, nicely done. And that's what I mean. You saw me point somewhere that was not white, you ignore it, you go right back to it. That's the game, right? People trying to throw you off. So I might be lined up over here and it may have nothing to do with the play at all. Here we go. Henry, start it green this time. Same thing, only to what comes out of my mouth. Ready. Orange, white, green, black. Orange. Black! Sprint through, sprint through. Good, relax. Nicely done. Now, what got you on that? Just uh, shuffling all the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and, that, and that, that's, that's what good, because that's what's good because no, then you, <laughs> Right, because if that was pre-programmed and you knew, what would you have done instead of shuffle? Sprint. Sprint, right? Last one. This one, Jack. You're only going off of what I point to. Okay? So you're ignoring my voice going off what I point to, okay? Ready? Got to switch that, that cognitive mode, ready? Finish through, finish through, finish through, good, nicely done. Now the best thing you did there, the entire time, and that was all pretty clean, when you saw that back pedal, he dropped his center of gravity, created a positive sprint angle and shuffled. The one thing that I can't stand when coaches teach out of a back pedal to a sprint is here, and then they want you to chop your feet. And that's that whole fast feet don't eat mindset. No, no, you always choose power. If fast feet don't eat, then people without power get devoured. It's about an angle, get out of my way, you're about to see crazy power. You want to load, and then drive out. So that's a perfect example of efficiency. Nicely done, you're good, grab a drink. Green, black, white. Finish through, finish through, finish through, finish through, good. Now, 
Does that add a different element to it? What do you think about when you hear that? What helps you block that out? You got to. And that's why it doesn't matter how we could set up 30 cones. All you need is three to four cones and then variability with the voice, the touch, anything like that. And that's true agility. Yo, that's a session today. That's a session. Good. Good work. Good work, Jack. Any questions? No questions? So if you're a coach watching this, remember context is key. Not every drill is gonna be appropriate for everybody, right? You have to make sure, have you gone through certain progressions before you just decide to take anything you saw in this video today and implement it with the people that you're doing it with. It's a big issue. People get on YouTube, people get on other platforms and they just see something that looks cool and they run outside and they forget to teach first, right? So you have to establish some key fundamentals. Also, the sequence is important here. Today we went through some soft tissue, some mobility, a warm up, then we did our plyometrics and our jumps. The importance of that is not only do we want to get the body primed, make sure the muscles, joints, and nervous system are ready to perform, but we also want to do explosive work like the plows and jumps early on. Why? Because as athletes continue to go through their workout, glycogen, which is a stored form of energy within the muscle and eventually gets converted into ATP, that gets depleted. So if we start doing a bunch of jumps and plyometrics later on when they're already fatigued, there's a higher risk of injury there because they're landing mechanics. Anything technically might not be as sound because of their fatigue. So we always go soft tissue, we go into our warm up, we do anything neural, med ball throws, jumps, plyos, and then we'll get into some of the technical drills and then finally the competitive work. Today you saw a snapshot of both multi-directional elements and agility elements. Make sure you guys leave comments in the section below. Would love to learn what's helping you, what you want to learn more about. Hopefully you guys are finding these videos helpful. Be sure to subscribe.